So we are recording now. We were just having a conversation and then it got really interesting. So I thought, let's record you. <laughs> yeah, that it did. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, we were talking about, you know, all kinds of uh, personal challenges and um, how shall we put it, sudden opportunities, you know, as a, as a result of those challenges. And so what I was about to say is that the various things that are happening, happening in my life and, you know, with my family and extended friends and so on, you know, I absolutely see this as a part of my life contract, you know, that I um, help to design uh, with my guides and other helpers. And uh, from my free will and choice, I agreed to taking all of this on. And so when I relate to these experiences in this way, what it does is that it completely takes away any um, sense of victimhood of stuff being done to me. And there's a very strong sense of, yes, you know, these are growth experiences. Oh. Just waiting for you to come back. Roger is experiencing uh, some slow Wi-Fi. Yeah, this Wi-Fi has been a pain. Um, yeah. I was just talking about how the sense of victimhood kind of goes out the window. And um, it feels that there's a real spiritual maturity that comes about through this, that, that yes, this is mine to experience. You know, this is, these are my responsibilities. Um, and yeah, you know, so I've been uh, uh, feeling this a lot. Thank you for, for sharing that. Absolutely. I, I, I feel the same way that whenever we realize that there is always some kind of gift of power that is available to us in those situations mm -hmm. and you know i am an astrologer and i see charts all the time and i really believe in in destined situations in destined moments like i see i see how you know the planets and the stars were aligned uh for that one soul and it's like you know i see things and i will tell the client um, you know, because all my, um, the people that are drawn to me are amazing, amazing souls, like really, um, extraordinary in their path and, um, you know, really knowing themselves. Um, and I often see, you know, that they would have had situations and I mention it and I usually thank them, you know, for sticking around and because, you know, we, we know how it is to be in a level of being that is not as dense as earth um, memories of you know functioning um, being ourselves in a, in in other in other timelines but also in other star systems yeah and it's not always easy to be to be here being ourselves and doing our doing our part so yeah thank you for sharing that i feel that too i feel yeah. that yeah i'm i'm really glad that you just said what you said because in one of the recent medical qigong sessions with michael profeto um, an image came to me that just even even now that it's been a few weeks since, um, it just it just boggles the mind over over how spot on it is. 
So the image was that I saw a person in one of the old kind of diving suits, you know, with the uh, uh, air tube that goes up to the surface. And then there, there would be a boat and a crew operating like an air pump. That was the image. Mm -hmm. And then I thought of, well, that's exactly like me in this physical earth density. Um, and my crew is supplying like the air, you know, that's supporting me, that's keeping me here and enable me, you know, you know, helping me to function and do what I need to do here. And uh, I saw this crew as being like my team of guides and helpers. I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I just, yeah. when I, you know, when it came to me, it was like, oh my gosh, this is spot on. <laughs> this is exactly it because, you know, there's the old kind of diving suit, you know, um, underwater with great pressure, you know, being in a foreign mm -hmm. environment. Um, I thought that's, that's exactly right. <laughs> Amazing. Yes, yeah. that's so true. We do have so much support. And, you know, we're all humans at the same time. And sometimes we can forget I know I I have moments I feel so alone in a situation you know I was mentioning uh living in a country that isn't all that supportive of women right and then every time it turns around and in, in, in magical ways that makes me think oh I'm not alone after all but in that moment it's it's a yeah. really good image to remember that there is that there is a lifeline on some level to our to our origins to our star allies i like that it's yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and it's and it's also um you know it's also our higher self you know that when we think of the help that we're receiving you know there's a little bit of a I don't necessarily want to use the word danger because that's that's too much, but um, how, how to say it? there's a certain perspective, a certain limitation when we think again of of, of even ourselves and all the non physical help that we're receiving. You know, there's more to it. I think that's the thing that I was trying to say. Um, and like with our higher self, it seems like the big work. And, you know, you and I have talked about this before in our other videos. The big work is remembering who and what we are. And that's tapping into um, the wisdom, the um, strength, um, the compassion, the love, all of those higher qualities that are a part of who we are as our higher self. Yeah, and, and also as you were speaking, I kind of felt that we are able to tune into solutions from that, from that place of knowing that kind of I think this is not my quote I don't know who quoted that but it's finding a, a higher dimensional solution for a 3d problem yeah uh, maybe the more the more that we are aware that we can that you know it is part of who we are to bring that I don't know sometimes I feel it's from the future into the now into you know from a place of of um all knowing to this point yeah, you say, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely have so much help, you know, within us and, you know, with our extended team of helpers. I don't know if it's me doing the beeping or if it's, let me just see if I've got anything over. I have to do. Okay, apologies there. I had another app open. Okay. Yeah, here we are talking about, you know, advanced level stuff with uh, what amounts to be rather primitive technology. 
Isn't that funny as well? It's a slowing down of the Wi-Fi system. And yeah, oh. this is true. So that's yet another, you know, metaphor for how we are, we are so capable of dealing with this kind of life experiences that are, you know, triggering or sometimes I think it delays us a little bit, but, you know, we catch up on, on other, on other levels so yeah but i do think that this is a good time to to find the others like i feel that it's like we didn't come here by ourselves there are other ones that are you know like us that, that um have come yeah. here with you know uh, some kind of soul desire to to express express um yeah, what are we expressing? Some kind of loving kindness that guides guides the energy frequency into a higher into a higher potential, into a into a benevolent future potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So collaborations, you know, like literally, how how do we find how do we find the others? Uh, this is this is one of the one of the many questions that I get. Uh, a lot so I I feel that we are I mean I don't even remember how we I know we met online but like I feel so many of us are coming together because we really know each other on another level we know that we can assist each other each other's missions or you know just just to to walk a path side by side for a time um it's it's also feeling when I tune in like a circuitry that eventually the sacred geometry needs to come together and the circuitry turns itself on. Um, that way we can, and I don't know again, if the word is to harness higher frequency or to hold or to maybe ground higher frequency, but I don't think we can do this with one physical body but we can do when when we are in agreement you know what you were talking about a life path and an agreement before birth and we're well, in agreement before coming to earth it's it's uh, a big picture um there's many there's many pieces to it um there is the matter of you know kind of finding kindred spirits um and you know there's the expression that energetically uh like attracts like this is something that uh, uh bob monroe um speaks of in his writings um and it's exactly like musicians you know getting in tune with one another with their instruments um I think there's also an aspect that, and, and this is something that comes through the uh, Octurian transmissions to Daniel Scranton. Um, in many of his messages, he talks about how um, one of the important things is that we work with our vibration. Um, my screen here is little wonky, there we go. Um, that we work with our vibration and, uh, you know, the importance of like um, having time to relax, getting out in nature. That's something that you've talked about more than once. Um, and it is a very powerful thing to do. You know, if people have particular practices that they do, um, but uh, Daniel's message is keeps talking about, you know, relaxing, having time for ourselves, that in this way, we're um, absorbing more of the higher, higher aspects coming, you know, coming down to us and then within us. And during the pandemic, and then like we were in quarantine for three months, I think, um, I had this very real sense that 
Well, you know, we you know we had social media, of course, but there was a sense that even if we didn't have social media, each of us, you know, what we're doing with our energies, um, we're connecting because we are part of a collective. You know, we are source energy beings. So even if we're not in physical life, finding many kindred spirits, um, at, a, at a higher level, these connections are happening. I don't know if you if you notice that, but with the souls that we are so closely connected, even when we don't talk for a really long time, when we see each other again, there is like just a continuation of a conversation. There is never like, you know, the niceties. Um, yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, and this happened and that happened. And then, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. It just continues as if we've been, you know, having conversations all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Def <laughs> That's absolutely spot on. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I yeah. think the last the last conversation that we had was when I first arrived. I didn't even have a, a house here. So that was right. January. Yeah, that's right. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, apologies. March, March, uh -huh. March, March. That is the date of our of our last video. That's correct. Yes. It was it was toward the beginning of March. Yes. So yeah, March, April, May, June, July. Yeah. One of the um, one of the things that I've been seeing in my blogs for this year is it's different from last year. Last year was extremely powerful. Um, and I noticed that many new experiences were happening. And, uh, and in my blog number six, uh, toward, you know, at the end, I even made a list of uh, the new things that I would noticed um, uh, in, the, in the blog entries and how they didn't seem to be based on something previously. Um, like Almilam, that began to, you know, uh, that star system began to manifest much more last year. And there was a um, star being that um, began to help Michael and myself in our medical Qigong sessions and, I just had this hunch about him and in doing an energy reading, it was like, yeah, he's, he's a being from Omnilam. Amazing. And more starting, um, more things were starting to happen with, with Robert Monroe, you know, and Rosie McKnight, you know, who- I'd like who, to hear, just for the purpose, because if we are putting this on YouTube, I should just mention that, um, Roger is um, really a, a galactic interstellar brother, and um, the the blogs that he that you speak of are really you know galactic information that you just you just every day write what what mm -hmm. you perceive, and a lot of it comes through the medical qigong with Michael Perfetto, right? So when yeah. when you are able to receive a lot more information. Yeah, and Michael was the one that first told me about Robert Monroe and the Monroe Institute. And one of the things that I noticed is that over time, Robert, and I need to say that he passed on in 1995. And so he began to show up in some of our sessions. Um, there was a session when Michael was working on my heart. I think this might have been 2018. So Michael was working on my heart system and an image came to him of a, a Starcraft and Robert Monroe. And so that left both of us kind of scratching our heads because um, I've not received any training from the Monroe Institute, whereas Michael has. 
And then, um, you know, there were other examples of when he began to show up un, un, unexpectedly to me. And so this year, um, I think in our last video, I talked about yes. uh, how Robert was showing up and then a manuscript of uh, Rosie McKnight who worked closely with uh, Bob at the, at the Monroe Institute. Uh, I received a copy of it and, so anyway, uh, Bob has continued to show up to me. So um, this is something that I'm seeing this year that things like Alni Lam, um, uh, uh, Bob Monroe, um, the Kazinian symbol that you know we've had very deep experiences with, um, these things that I was starting to experience um, in kind of like, kind of like a getting the foot in the door kind of way last year. Now mm -hmm. this year, uh, you know, it's so much deeper, just amazingly deeper. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So it's not so much new stuff, but a deepening of, mm -hmm. you know, what we've, you know, had been experiencing. Amazing. I feel, I feel that too with, with my journey but also with the groups because you know i hold these groups where we where we do a voyage into into the into the field of consciousness the stream of consciousness but i just yeah. wanted to mention the al nilam in case uh people are watching or get to watch this um it's in the orion zone is one of the stars in the orion's belt and mm -hmm. uh, they're very highly advanced uh, beings in that star system as well as other beings that are not in service to life but the original beings um, mm -hmm. very wise highly evolved and, and in service to humanity on earth as well assisting us in our evolution or evolutionary phase earth and you also mentioned about Kazinon and that's in the Electra system yes yeah, that, yeah, Pallades. Pallades. Just, just so that people can have it a bit more. Yeah, yeah, Arcturus too. Up to date. Yeah, I love, I love this Arcturus um, yeah. structure that you see. Yeah. Arcturus yes. um, power. Um, power. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. Um, if this is something that I'd mentioned in our last video or not, I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe it happened afterwards. But in one of the sessions with Michael, um, there was a message and I think it was Michael receiving it from me. And it was something to the effect, and, and these aren't the exact words, but it's something like, um, uh, for what Roger seeks, he needs to first enter the temple. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Good, good. <laughs> okay, so this is new stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, both of us kind of pondered that and it didn't make sense to me at first. Uh, because like with the experiences that Michael and I are having, we've been in any number of off-planet structures, uh, uh, like the one that you just mentioned in, in the Arcturus system that we've had a number of experiences with and you know Arcturians there and the council there. Um, there's the golden pyramid that I've spoken uh, quite a bit about um, uh, that's on planet Kazanon in the Electra system. Um, there's other structures that, you know, I'm not entirely sure where they are, uh, but they've been very vivid experiences of structures and then uh, like a group, you know, other people in those experiences with me. So I was kind of at a loss to understand what that message meant. 
And then I began to have some energetic experiences. And one of them was also in a session with Michael. I began to feel very strong energies, um, like with my left uh, lung, my uh, left arm going down like to, you know, this part, my wrist, which has a very strong energy center, the palm. And it felt to me that this was Kazinian energy or, you know, the electrosystem energy. And then I also felt, oh, um, this I felt to be yin, uh, which is the left side of the body. Then the yang, I felt this to, uh, these energies, I felt these to be Arcturian. And again, it was, you know, like the left lung, the coming down my uh, right, right arm, the palms, you know, very strong energies. And then in the forehead, um, I felt a third energy that I knew was uh, uh, Alnilam. Huh. And from what I know of that civilization, uh, uh, they're very powerful with balancing. And that's exactly what I felt. Uh, so then I felt this triangle of uh, energies. And the, and the reason why I described uh, the Kazinian frequencies as yin and the Arcturian is, is, is yang is that that's exactly the experiences that I've had in those two structures. That yes. in the golden pyramid on, on, on Kazanon, it, it feels very individually transforming. Whereas the uh, being inside the structure, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Arcturian structure, it's very expansive. I have experiences um, uh, connecting with um, many, many, many star systems in the in these um, uh, star nations community. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, so there's the individual, and then there's the, there's the, the collective expansion. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the more that I feel the Alnilam, uh, you know, it's the balancing of the two. So when I had that experience and saw this triangle um, between those three star systems, it was like, this is the temple. You know, it's an energetic temple that is that, that apparently it was referring to and not like a solid structure. Amazing. Yeah, so that's that's a new thing that just happened recently. Amazing. Because this is one of the things that I wanted. I mean, I didn't I didn't have, you know, I, well, obviously we didn't plan this conversation. It was last night, like right. let's let's talk tomorrow. And you know, it's always so amazing. But one of the sense that I have now is that we're able to harness our star frequencies. In other words, you, I know that you have connections to all those star systems that you speak of because I looked mm -hmm. at your chart, right? And you yeah. knew that before I even did the chart. So you were so in tune with all of those frequencies anyway. So you're able to um, match. So you're on some level, your, your technology, your physicality is able to match the frequency and then you're able to receive transmit both maybe so you are matching the frequency of this intelligence or or the you know the the the, the frequency of the stars but also the frequency of the intelligence and when i talk intelligence i'm talking about the star beings that are you know doing something like you say the they're mm -hmm. towards, uh, perhaps more in service to the collective because they're one of the highest uh, frequency beings in our galaxy and so on. So often I am asked, you know, how do we, 
how do we know that we are in in our frequency so that we can be a frequency match to who we truly are because this is sorry this is is a double is a double question because i feel that we can only resonate truly with the frequency of the stars that we are already connected with i don't think that for example i don't think i need to try and be like you or have those kind of connections and experience the same experience as you because i have perhaps a slightly different frequency that I'm connecting and somehow yeah. the sacred geometry might not be a triangle, it might be something else, but we are powerful in the knowing and in the, what shall we call it, receiving, transmitting, I don't know. Mm. Um, so this is my sense that the frequency match is really important and we are grasping that, that wisdom as you say. Yeah. As you mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Frequency match um, goes back to our self identity and evolving to uh, the higher sense of who and what we are as, as our higher self, you know, cause um, this is, this is something that Michael and I, noticed uh, last year, and in particular coming into this year, um, sometimes we have sessions where very little is experienced in terms of like images or messages. messages. It's just, you know, being in the pure energy work. This has been happening more, more to us. But there's also a sense of, um, when I was talking with Michael about this, he says, yeah, th there's a sense of greater ease. Mm. You know, we're not working, we're not putting out effort mm. to experience these, um, uh, having these things happen with our star helpers. Mm. Uh, like during a Qigong, a medical Qigong session, I just lay down on the table, relax, there we are. And, you know, there's this immediate sense of, of, of the group. Sometimes images start to come. Um, but these connections are there even before Michael starts to do his work. So would you say that this is because you you on some level, train yourself to, to level your frequency, to be in that beingness when you, when you are, you know, in that, in that moment, you, you, you've practiced that a little bit enough to now just go right in. I'm sorry. I just see my, my laptop um, needs charging. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Tell you what, I'll grab some water. <clears throat> I just need to check if the if I can get as far as the as the plug. Bear with me. Okay. Or I might have to move. <laughs> this is just proof that we hadn't quite planned this. <laughs> how, how far my cable? Yeah. That far. Um, I think I'm better off going that direction. Okay. Walk. Walk with all of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and charge it up here. Okay, that's charging. And then, sorry, I'm just going to grab. A chair. We'll call ourselves the not ready for prime time players. <laughs> well, there is a light here, so that works. So I can okay. 
Just hold it. Hold it. I, got, I got my water, so we're all set. Oh, is even better lighting here. Hmm. Okay, so apologies for that moving. Yes, we were yeah, talking about a, um, easy, easy, easy fall it is to access con higher consciousness hmm. to access your <clears throat> your um, your guides. Yeah, but the, well, I mean they're really working with you, and they are star beings. Oh yeah. Um, you know it's. Um, I think it goes back to our life path contract. You know, that, um, yeah, like when we designed uh, this life uh, before coming into this incarnation, when we designed our, our life path plan or agreement with our guides, um, you know, we said, yeah, we're going to do all this stuff. And, you know, we're going to have uh, these particular missions that we're, you know, that we're doing here. Um, so all of that was in a sense set up by ourselves and our guides. Um, you know, Michael and I have now, I'm trying to think, Michael and I have now been working together for close to eight years. You know, we um, did 16 months of acupuncture and then in, that started in 2017. And then about halfway through 2018, we switched to medical Qigong. And so we've been doing that uh, since then. Um, so yeah, we've been doing a lot of work. Um, so like I said, when, you know, even before, um, when even, I'm sorry, when we have a medical Qigong session, even before Michael starts doing the energy work, you know, I was describing how I get on the table, relax, and, you know, connections happen. I'm not working per se to establish those connections. I just open, you know, it's, it's like opening myself um, I do think of, um, well, it, I do think of kind of getting into a particular frequency within myself. It, it, this is very hard to describe. I, I completely um, understand. It's funny because as you're trying to explain, I see that you are connecting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it just happens. It just happens. You know, it, it just happens. It's like, well, you know, just like how you, how you were trying to find a connection for your for your laptop. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got the plug. You plug it in. You don't think about it. That's true. It you don't doubt it either. You and, trust and it. The energy flows. So you know, it's that way. I you know, I lie down on the table, just open myself you know, to my guides, and there we are. Um, and what I, you know, what I've also noticed, you know, with my blogs is that really from the beginning, the very beginning of when Michael and I began to work together, these things were happening. You know, we were connecting with star beings. We were um, having... Um, uh, off-planet dreams, you know, like with my team of guides, um, there wasn't a progression. We started working together and there it is. Mm. And, you know, prior to Michael, you know, I've had teachers, I've had various kinds of practices, various kinds of group work. Um, the acupuncturist who um, opened the door for me to work with Michael, uh, Robin Johnson, we got into some very deep stuff because both of us felt a Palladian connection. Mm. Um, but yeah, the idea of like working for these connections, 
you know, I'm I'm at a complete loss. You know, I, you know that's why that's why I um, continue to not think of myself as a teacher because I'm not giving specific techniques for people to use. I'm just uh, describing these experiences and say, hey, these realities are happening. You know, we're not just our physical body, we're not just our physical earth life, but there's more to us. And uh, these higher parts are already within you. You know, these connections with the stars, they're already within you. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I, what I do is never a teaching. I just, I just say to them, let's do this. This is how, how I do it. See if it works for you. But I cannot teach you to have the experience that I have. And of mm -hmm. course, each one will have their own experience. So there is more, there is more than one way. And absolutely, I, I agree with you. It is simple. That's the one thing that I always say. It's simple. You don't have to stand on one foot and, you know, breeze backwards or whatever, you know, something that you read in a book and you have to know. Right. It's easy. And, and as you were mentioning, the more you do it, the more you do it. So uh -huh. I think it's, it's an, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's like this exile. It's like, okay, just be quiet. And then, and then it just comes, right? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like you, said, you know, like you said before, there's, you know, there's many ways to do this. There's, you know, each of us, you know, has our own thing, so to speak. Um, you know, you know, our star connections. Um, I think it was last year, uh, words came to me, and, I, and, and, and I think I might have mentioned this before, but, but it's really important that I say it now also. These words came to me, and, and, and it was star nations in residence. And I think that's really spot on, because with these words, a vision came to me of just a vast number of people who know who they are as source energy beings and as star beings having, having a physical human life mm -hmm. on earth right now. Um, these are people that know that about themselves. And each one, uh, in effect, represents one of the star nations uh, uh, systems. And in their work, they would they would use particular qualities of that of that star system. So with that, that's a perfect example of how there's many ways that are happening right now. Um, you know, particular people have a uh, perspective, you know, that they're sharing with others and it may or may not res resonate with me, but that's their perspective. You know, so the particular kind of energy work that I'm doing and the uh, um, um, higher energy connections that I'm making in particular with uh, a, what I call Kazinian frequencies and then ground them here. Um, you know, that's the particular thing that I'm doing, you know, and I have a sense that that's a particular quality of that, of that star system and that, that planet. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for, you know, accepting, accepting it or allowing it. I know words, words complicate things, but mm -hmm. There is always the potential that the human would say, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So thank you for, for being. Well, they've got something else that, you know, that they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lately, lately I have, um, you know, with this energy 
practice that I do each each morning. Um, uh, number of months ago, I started to do it more outside. And for a long time, I would just simply open the open the door, you know, to our, you know, to our gardens and everything and um, have a connection that way. But uh, a while back, it was kind of like, no, let's just let's just do more. And so then I go out on the back deck and do the practice in connecting with the four directions and then the various levels of star nations connections. And amazingly, I started to see uh, energy strands in the in the sky. When I made the connection with the star nations community. Um, uh, there was this visualization of uh, like web-like strands in the sky, like I just just mentioned, and I've had the experiences with this web, if you will, you know, for a, for a number of years now. But but actually visualizing it in the sky like that, this this was like a fairly new experience. But then the really amazing thing. And this is really cool. I felt the trees absorbing it. The trees are connecting with all these various energies. And then I also felt that the trees are collaborating with these connections. And then the trees are uh, sharing these energy connections with their tree network, you know, all over the planet. Amazing. That just, that just really, that just really, um, well, impressed me, <laughs> for want of a better word, when I first uh, saw that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, because absolutely, you know, that we did the 108 days with the trees, listening to the sentient trees. Yeah. And that's exactly what we were getting, was so like, don't. Like never, never unplug. It just was like almost, a, you know, a, an invitation, a request. Never unplug from the natural network, the you know, the real, uh, true organic network. And the trees are helping us, uh, in that because you know we are in this age of artificial intelligence, and mm. and it can be good, and it can be very useful, and some of us are using it, and. And but it's really important to not forget the connection. And so, um, yeah, thank you for mentioning the trees because that was one of the the big things that they told us, all of us, you know, the many of us that were doing that, mm -hmm. um, connecting our meditation. That they have the the network, the the true network. It's going through, and there is a tree everywhere, so everybody can in mm -hmm. any location connect to a tree so yeah thank you one of the things that i experienced with this energy practice is that it, it needs to be done at multiple levels within myself simultaneously that the uh, energy connection needs to be done at a at a higher level of of myself as a as a star being, if you will. But then the connection with the earth needs to be done from uh, within physical earth life. Mm. So that's the importance. Well, again, of, the frequency match. Yes, 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 exactly right. So that's the importance of ourselves having this human life, you know, at this time. Um, yeah, yeah, frequency match, yeah. Because the um, one of the things that the Octurians talk about in Daniel Scranton's message is with them having higher frequency on, uh, um, you know, non-physical bodies, that they can have a hard time kind of understanding or maybe appreciating even the 
um, physical conditions that we have on earth, you know, as being a part of humanity, because it's so different from their experience. And it's, you know, there's not a, you know, there's not like an inner a frequency match, you know, between humanity and Octurians. So the role that we have mm -hmm. in having both of these parts of ourselves as a star being and as a human, um, they said that this is of immense help to oh. them because they connect with us, you know, all the time, you know, with our higher level parts. And then our higher level parts are able to then um, kind of describe what the human part of ourself is going through, you know, like with all this earth stuff going on now. <laughs> That's um, also kind of like a lovely way to think that it's not only we need them, but in some way we're also assisting, here's my dog, assisting, um, like it's a collaboration, right? That collaboration between all of absolutely. us. It's absolutely a collaboration. And, and again, going back to the phrase star nations in residence, you know, th this is our work. This is our work. So even uh, for the people that may feel that they don't necessarily have a, a um, outline mission for Earth or, you know, I have a lot of clients that want to know what it is the one thing that I'm supposed to do. And sometimes this is it. Being is the yeah. most really, truly the most important thing is it's being the frequency on Earth, truly being. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, one thing that I'd like to mention real quick, um, I, I don't know what our time situation is here, but- uh, In an hour. Yeah. So, you know, there is this greater experience with the trees. So this year, uh, just out of nowhere, I've had greater connections with whales. And, this is something that I did not set out to do. I did not plan it. Um, but, you know, both my grandson and granddaughter are also having treatments with Michael. So uh, I take my granddaughter to her session and I waited, you know, I'm, I'm in the waiting room. And so I, you know, here I am just relaxing and this is what happened just only a couple of weeks ago. So here I am sitting in the chair in the waiting room. All of a sudden I feel this very large presence. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how else to describe it, but it was uh, like a massive consciousness. And it's connecting with me. Again, I did not initiate this. It came to me. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, this is a whale. And uh, again, here we are in the waiting room. And so we go out traveling in the stars and it feels like we're absolute teammates mm -hmm. out there in the journey. And since then there's been some other experiences with the uh, whales and uh, now it just feels like there's this whale that's part of my team. Uh, but, but I wanted to mention this because it feels to me that there's a relationship between whales in, in the ocean and then trees on land. Yes. It feels, it feels like the whales have great respect for, for, for trees. Yes. And oh, what, one of the other messages that came to me about whales is that I was seeing them as, of course, being, being multidimensional beings, but uh, they have a distinct message, um, I'm sorry, not message, mission that they're playing on other planets beside Earth. 
you know, they're in other oceans. I had a vision of uh, whales being in the ancient oceans on Mars huh. before all of that changed. Uh, but while Mars had its water, uh, there were whales there for part of that part of that time. Amazing. Hmm. Yeah. I I feel the same way. The connection to the whales. I. Um, it's. Um, I was in ceremony with Chief Gordon Light Eagle. I was a few years ago, quite a few years ago, hmm. and I had the same kind of vision information download that so this is what they were telling me that they were they were here carrying a lot of information holding a lot of information for when humanity was ready i guess that was also waiting for us to match the frequencies so that we could yes. you know have this transfer or this this ability to uh, um whatever the word is, op open it up. And that some of them were, were leaving the planet. So this is, I want to say this is maybe 2010. And they were going to the bottom of the ocean. So the earth at the bottom of the ocean. And they were transmitting the frequency. I guess it was sonar, I don't know. But I physically was, you know, I was having a, a kind of an image of it all that they were going to the bottom of the sea and they were transferring that to the trees through the bottom of the sea and that I could go to the trees and connect and receive what they were leaving at the bottom of the oceans and that like oh I got shivers just remembering it yeah me too just now yeah that's beautiful yeah, so thank you. Thank you for bringing them. It's a long time I don't I don't hear them. So thank you for bringing that consciousness. Because uh, mm. I, I feel it in my body now. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a gift. What a blessing to be able to talk. I'm glad that it all worked out and, and the internet was all of a sudden the internet didn't didn't bother us anymore. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Wi-Fi we have in our house here is kind of wonky at times. So thank you so much. I think we should we should um, uh, stop the video now, but certainly mm -hmm. continue this conversation because it's there's always so many gifts from from speaking with you. Thank you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> thank you so much. Hey, well, thank you to you, and thank you to everyone that. Uh, sees this wonderful video yeah is there anything else that you want to share before we close let me um just kind of open the door here um, i have an image of my guides and um they what i get is it it feels like they're celebrating ah like there's so much joy um, in the higher planes that, you know, there's, um, you know, it kind of depends upon what we focus on here on, on Earth. We can be focusing on, uh, you know, the weather problems, all the political stuff, wars and stuff like that. So, yes, you know, all of that's going on and it's a part of the Earth Life School. Yet at the same time, Again, depending upon the frequency or the particular radio station that you tune into, so to speak, um, there's absolutely incredible things happening with human evolution, um, uh, life evolution on this planet. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there's an an intuitive reader that I've mentioned from time to time, Sterling, uh, that's on YouTube. Uh, his channel is called something like um, Sterling Psychic Medium, something like that. But he, he has a show every Sunday afternoon that's taped. And so I usually listen to it. 
And uh, Sterling's team of guides have been pretty consistent in saying that literally within a couple years, maybe two, three years, um, how the reality that we are not alone in the universe will become public knowledge. Uh, and that um, UFOs or UAPs, whatever you want to call them, are, are real. Um, according to Sterling, uh, well, again, his guides, that it may be around uh, 2026, thereabouts. You know, he sometimes says 2025, sometimes he says 2026. Uh, but he said that there will be official announcements about this. Um, and what they're now saying is that uh, these announcements will first come out of uh, Asia and Europe. Huh. They will take the lead on this. And afterwards, the US and other countries will you know, we'll join in on that. Um, but that will really help to open open things up, you know, in terms of having open, open connections, open relationships with, you know, our star uh, brothers and sisters, and also, also within us, we will, they will help humanity to uh, know more about who we are as, as star beings uh, living a human life. So it's something that I'm looking forward to, but you know, everything that we've talked about is about how we don't have to wait for any external event. Um, you know, it's happening right now yeah. and it starts within us you know, you know, with our self identity, knowing that we are more than our physical body, we are more than a human body. Um, I'm sorry, we are more than a human identity. You know, we are um, cosmic beings. Thank so you. that's kind of the message that I, I think I was kind of getting <laughs> from them. And um, yeah, so they see all these things happening and they're delighted and they're um, really wanting to physically be with us. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Sorry about my cameramanship here, but I'm holding the laptop close to the close to the plug. It was okay. an immense honor and pleasure as always to have some precious precious conversation with you so i look forward to our next oh definitely definitely and thank you thank you so much for all of your help um you know all of all of these good feelings and good information um you know it's entirely mutual thank you much love roger see you bye bye